it's not just the Easter liturgy that we want, of course. Uh, we want the anointing of the sick, sick, I would say, primarily, is the most important thing, is to find ways that we can deliver the anointing of the sick to those who are sick and dying. I understand you had a remarkable experience. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I still haven't got um, the results back as yeah. to whether or not I have coronavirus. It's been, I kind of hope I do, because if I don't, I'm really scared, because my wife and I have been going up, you know, we've been up and down with this sickness stuff. Um, and I was rushed to the emergency room by ambulance from a doctor's office. That's kind of the option they gave me. And I was very nervous, obviously, and praying, begging our Lord for mercy, not sure what was about to happen. And Carrie Beckman uh, arranged for a priest to come and see me. And it was a beautiful experience being able to go to confession. I, I, I'm not sure if you know what I mean, perhaps you do, where it was a complete unguarded confession. I just made war with my ego and just repented from the depths of my being. Um, that and it, corpse must still be recovering. Yeah, I mean, he thought the coronavirus might be bad, but this really, this took yeah, him out. He, I've never heard a lot of what you said. <laughs> what is that? How is that even possible? It was amazing. <laughs> but anyway, it brought me tremendous comfort, and I can't imagine what it would be like if I was told... Uh, it looks like, you know, you are dying. Um, thankfully, I don't think anything like that's happening, right? But if I was told that and then told, and by the way, you know, uh, priest can't see you because maybe the bishop has put the kibosh on that. But that actually leads me to this question. Like, have the bishops actually done that? What are bishops doing in different dioceses that has kind of led you to respond to this? Because I presume that you would think it's at least a prudent thing that Holy Mass isn't being celebrated publicly right now or no? That, well, that's that's something I just can't seem to get into people's heads. When we say publicly, we don't mean a thousand people, five hundred people packed into a church. We're really talking about cars, sealed cars, people inside their cars in a parking lot, where the priest is actually either in the church or at an altar in the parking lot, mm. and it's it's streamed to us through the the radio. Uh, or broadcast in some way. We open our windows just a little bit and we're able to uh, to be present. And a lot of people say, well, what's the point of that? A car in a parking lot. And I, I, I start singing, I won't do this now, but I start singing to them the song from My, uh, My Fair Lady, I, I wanna be on the street where you live. I mean, it's it's natural for people who love someone to want to be as close as possible to them. And we love Jesus in the sacrament and we believe that he is there in a way that being that much closer to him is different from a, a screen. And uh, we're be with our fellow parishioners, with, with our fellow worshipers, and that always strengthens our faith to think of all these people who have also, we, we've been given a dispensation. We're not asking, of course, the dispensation be, be lifted, but we've been given a dispensation. We don't have to go to mass. The point is we want to go to mass and we want to be there uh, when the blessed be there as close as we can, when the blessed sacrament is being um, uh, uh, offered, and so I I think that uh, so first of all, when we ask for public masses, we're not asking for the the churches to be mobbed um, by believers, but first and foremost, we're asking the bishops to do everything they can. For instance, mm -hmm. this anointing of the sick. Um, Yes, it, 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 the um, virus is, is contagious, and we don't want our, our priests to die. <laughs> Something like, now I think the number's up to 81 priests in Italy have died um, because of the virus. I don't know if they got it ministering to the sick. I have no idea how they got it. We're not told that. But um, one of my uh, f former students uh, put up a, a picture of him in one of those whole personal protective equipment. He's a chaplain in a hospital. He's learned how to wear that. He's learned how to take it off. He's learned how to use it. And I want to say every bishop should be making sure that those that those are provided for any priest that's going to the hospitals, trained how to do it. But a lot of hospitals are forbidding priests to come in, right? They don't want them in. Um, maybe they're just showing up without any kind of gear and insisting. But, you know, I think we have to make certain that that and if a, if a hospital does refuse to allow a priest in who is capable of using this personal protective equipment, the, the, the bishop should be calling the head of the hospital and the board members and saying, we need this. This is not optional for us. This is not just like a flowery delivery. This is not a balloon delivery to, to the hospital. This is not a teddy bear that we're delivering. These are the last rites where we think that we are opening the door of heaven to people and giving them the strength that they need. Sometimes we're, actually healings happen, as we know. 
And so it, it, physical healings, maybe they're more impressed by that. But for us, it's really the spiritual healing that's the most important thing. And so one thing is for the bishops to couple things, we want them to fight for us, to tell state governments that, again, we need the right to assemble, observing all due precautions, observing all precautions that you want us to take, we will take them. But people go to grocery stores, people go to abortion clinics, people go to liquor stores. Why can't we sit in a car in a parking lot to pray together uh, and worship our Lord? It, it just doesn't make sense. And the bishops have to have their face out there. They need to not just to issue some statement that's on some website that you might get if you subscribe to it. I want to see the bishops' faces. And I want them as fathers to say, I know this is hard for you. I know that you are, are craving the sacraments. I, too, it breaks my... I, one priest yesterday did you know, a blessing of his whole campus of the church and basically beyond. And, and he, he said he wept because it was so hard for him not to have his people there and not to be serving them. And I want to say, yes, we want weeping bishops, bishops mm -hmm. who are are so upset that we're upset, uh, rightly, we're all upset together, uh, that we're talking together. And again, that he will help us. I mean, I'm very impressed that my own diocese, the Diocese of Lansing, tomorrow is having a whole day of, of fasting and prayer, morning prayer, the chapel of divine mercy, meditation on the scriptures, virtually everything <laughs> I would want to have done is being done in one day for the whole uh, diocese. And of course, anybody else worldwide that wants to, to chime in. And I think now that's people who are addressing our spiritual needs. I want, we're all afraid that there's going to be a lot of people who just drift away from the faith at this time or even get angry. Where was my church for me when I needed him? I, it, it's no good. It's no good if it thinks that it tells me I have to go to mass on Sunday at the pain of mortal sin. And then the next day I'm not allowed to go. And and sometimes that has to happen, of course. Absolutely. Sometimes that has to happen. But we want to be told exactly why that's and what we should be doing to maintain our spiritual life in the meantime. I think this day tomorrow by the Diocese of Lansing is just an awesome thing uh, for uh, fortifying the faith of, of the faithful. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way, YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.